Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Rupan the third part one episode number 13 and 14. Okay, the previous two episodes. Um, episode number 11, uh, that was the first uh, Miyazaki and Takahata, you know, like directed uh, episode, I think in Rupan third part one. Mm, we like, you know, like we get a very, uh, what do you call it, family friendly. <laughs> very family friendly rupan there you know he is honorable he is nice um unlike uh you know like osumi's version of rupan so like you know we see him actually uh in like a problem where there's like someone is taking a girl hostage and you know since rupan is uh, a bit weak towards girls <laughs> you know he decided to save her and obviously like you know like save uh the majority of the population as well because there was like a plan to bomb the whole place to direct the uh, car or the truck from the bank to a certain direction and you know rupan said that nope we're doing this in my way where there will be no uh, casualties uh which is again very like you know like what can i say like which is very uh, uh miyazaki and takahata like so you know i i love that and um like you know i'm kind of biased towards them because i'm like you know i'm a big fan of the ghibli movies uh but yeah like uh, and then like you know we that that episode kind of plays out like there was a little uh you know that the guy but in the end tried to you know try to one up rupan but rupan is rupan you know like he uh he he got that guy you know shot him and you know the hostage was saved zenigata was almost on top of rupan so rupan had to bail and uh, yeah that was episode number 11 and i think episode number 12 i uh, was again like you know directed by osumi which we can see the very like you know the, the the big contrast between episode 11 and 12 where in episode 12 again we get back the lupan that we have been seeing in in part one the first few episodes the person who is reckless you know who who is just like you know very like what can you say like whatever he thinks that he'll do he'll do for example and that episode like you know he even took <laughs> Fujiko is like kind of like a hostage you know not hostage but you know like used her as well for his own like you know schemes and there was this whole thing with the um uh, statue or something yeah the statue you know where it it seemed as if Fujiko was losing but Fujiko was actually like you know uh, gunning for the maps not the statues which when she got it she was content and left while in the end we get a big revelation that none of them went won the old man <laughs> was the one who won because he had the original maps and he's like ah i'll just retire you know and well deserved i have to say you know he played with his life he took a gamble and he won so obviously he deserves the <laughs> reward so yeah that was that was a fun like you know fun episode like we got our like you know the original rupan back again like the first few episodes rupan back again now i'm not sure this episode uh, which is episode number 13 and 14 i think 13 is also directed by osumi i'm not sure um i'll be able to understand as soon as i watch it you know like because those two like uh, takahata miyazaki and osumi rupan are very different i can i can just understand why if i watch this episode but i think like i've read that this one is again like you know directed by osumi and i think this is the final one and after this it will be miyazaki and takahata all along up until the end but anyway let's see let's watch this um episode this is episode number 13 so yeah I'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here. Sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started. All right, here's the countdown. Three, two, one, go. Hmm. Hmm. Oh boy, I'm I'm really liking like you know like watching this from the beginning from season 1. I'm really loving this show. Now, it's kind of a shame that I won't be able to react to part two and three because it's so big i will however you know react to the episodes that you guys will suggest me one or two episodes you know i'll take from each comment and you know which are your favorites 
I'll react to only them and I'll watch the others on my own because it's like 200 episodes or something or more than that like part 2 and part 3 combined like it's impossible to react to so many of them so yeah it's a shame like you know I, I, I'm really loving this like you know watching this from part 1 I'm really liking this so yeah anyways let's start what is this a new car Oh! What happened? My god. <laughs> Try to slow. Oh, that's why. Wait, who? Whoa! What's with that face? Prophecy. What's with that face? Um, is this a vampire or something? Like, that's a very peculiar choice of words. What the hell? He disappears. <laughs> All right. Well, now you're late for Jigen. <laughs> yeah. Ten minutes. That's quite okay, I think. And he said that everything will disappear from in front of you. I don't think that's what he meant, but I don't know. Let's see. Okay, what, what are they planning to do now? Steal something, obviously. Beware of the time machine. Time machine Niki wo kete. Time machine, okay. Oh my god, Zenigata's here. <laughs> So yeah, he, he probably Yeah, he sent them a call letter most probably That's what everybody says Okay, let's see how he steals Oh, here we go Is this Fujiko? Every suspicious woman I see in this episode, uh, in this show, I, I, I feel like that's Fujiko. <laughs> Every suspicious lady. Or maybe that's Rupan in disguise. Um, <laughs> it's the end. Okay. So is, he, is Rupan somewhere here? In disguise? <laughs> yeah, this is Rupan we're talking about. Destined rival. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Come on, S squeeze his che cheek. Oh, it is Rupan. Oh my god. <laughs> well, got you. <laughs> Mission successful. <laughs> okay, d don't drop it. <laughs> uh, 
Um, wait, what the? Wait. Oh my god, what's happening? Oh, this guy again. Oh, that's what he meant. Okay. Mamo Kyosuke, okay. Mamo clan. Lupin the third thirteenth? What? Thirteenth? <laughs> yeah, he's the third. Oh my god, okay. Y you know what? <laughs> well, obviously. So, this guy is a time traveler? Is, is this guy a time traveler or, or, or just a tuny view? It could be either. <laughs> Mamo. Like, yeah, like in the Mamo that we... Is it the same Mamo? You know the the Mamo we saw before. The book's name is Madness. <laughs> oh my god, he's also <laughs> Okay. <laughs> oh my god, what's happening? What the? Oh, so that's a time machine? Wait, what? So this guy is person from this? No, no, he is. Wait. So this guy's from this? This era? Scientist, okay. What? Wait, what? Oh my god. Oh. So these are all delusions. There you go. Okay, so I'm guessing these are all his delusions that he said that, oh, I went forward in time, this, that, I saw. <laughs> oh, oh my god, he's here. Oh, wow, how can he? Oh great. No, that's not how it goes. It'll branch into a parallel world. This Rupan will be still alive. Oh god. Okay, what is this thing? How can it disappear?
And these are illusions or something? Oh my god. I think that's probably some visual tricks or something. <laughs> okay, calm down. He's pretty freaked out, I think. He's pretty freaked out, I can see that. <laughs> yeah. Well, obviously, if you see a huge castle disappear in front of you and that guy says, I'm going to kill your ancestor. Oh. It's weird, like, how is he coming in his dreams? Oh my god, here we go again. Oh! It was Fujiko. True. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Pachinko? Oh my god, it goes to gambling, great, horse racing. Kumare. Oh my god, I, I feel like the, the horse will disappear or something. <laughs> ah! I called it. <laughs> Wait, everyone is seeing that. So this is this must be some illusion. It's not only him. Everyone is seeing that. Oh boy. Uh, I don't think he is. Yo, slow down. Oh my god. Partner. Oh, that guy. Kyosuke again. Mamo. Oh great, we need to stop this guy. Uh... Wait, what? Wait, what? <laughs> the way he changed his... Uh, wait, what the? What's? Oh my god!
Oh, uh, that's why. No, I don't think that's not what he thought. <laughs> I doubt she went to the past. Yep. Uh. <laughs> Why don't you destroy the time machine? That will just... Wait, what? He really went. Oh! But what would he even do in this moment? <laughs> You're too old fashioned. <laughs> the insult. <laughs> Mr. Elephant. How did he come back? <laughs> so he... <laughs> Wait, what about Fujiko then? Oh my god. <laughs> ah, there he is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh. Zero pitch. Yeah, we. I have another wish. I'm sure this is some kind of weird illusion. Whoa. Is this really happening? Is he really traveling time? I doubt that. Yes! <laughs> Perfect plan! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh. Damn, we should have malfunctioned. Oh my god. Yes! It is a fun because <laughs> Milan Lupin. Uh Yes Oh my god Oh 
no. Okay, break his time machine. Secret technique. Wait, so this really was a time machine. Okay. Wow, I was not expecting that. I thought this would clearly be some kind of illusion or something. <laughs> oh my god, wow. Uh. I was kidding. <laughs> Whoa, Fujiko is very different here, I feel like. <laughs> okay, I think that's the end. All right. Um, <coughs> wow. Okay, this, this was a really fun episode. Okay, I, I love this one. Okay, let me check. Is this... Who directed this? Um, I feel like I've... Re uh, just a second. <coughs> I feel like <coughs> this is probably directed by Miyazaki. It felt like some, like, you know, it felt like something that would Miyazaki would uh, direct. Let me check. Okay, this was episode number 13. Okay, um, Masaki Osumi. Oh, Miyazaki Isao Takata. Oh, everyone was involved with this. I think. I think, kind of, in a way. Um, yeah, and from the next episode onwards, which is episode number fourteen, it will only be Miyazaki and Takahata. Like, I, I'm not seeing Osumi's name after this anymore. Yeah. So this, this is the final one which he was involved in some way. Okay. Um. All right. This episode. Ah, uh, my God. This was fantastic. I don't know why, but like, you know, always like these type of time travel or battle world stories or episodes kind of like, you know, uh, I don't know, like I, I, I find a weird fascination for them. And um, this that's probably be the reason why I like this episode so much. Now, here's the thing from the beginning of this episode, um, I thought this probably is not something time travel related. Uh, this is maybe this is something uh, that we're going to see in the end that Oh, this was not nothing time travel related. It was basically this guy was like an illusion master or something or something like that. If, if you guys remember the first one of the first few episodes, we actually meet a guy who was an illusionist. It's like, I don't remember his name, but you know, he's floating on top of mid air and like, you know, doing fire stuff and all that. Those are all illusions. So I, I thought it would be something similar to that where we're going to get a revelation in the end that oh this was just an illusion he basically kind of kidnapped and you know sedated um uh, fujiko for a moment or something like that i thought it was going to go but turns out it really was a time machine like i was surprised with that <coughs> now <coughs> okay this episode uh okay so let's talk from the beginning in the beginning we see rupan move like you know in his car and uh, going to meet Jigen and he meets this guy Mamo Kyosuke and he goes to uh, as always Zenigata is involved you know because he probably sent a call letter uh, to steal the statue or whatever <clears throat> like that's obviously that's how every phantom thief and ev like you know Rupan kind of does his thing like you know uh, issue a call letter the police will obviously be there and Rupan would go in front of their eyes steal the stuff and get out and that's how phantom thieves work so <clears throat> here um you know we see him tricking zenigata again and on uh, yeah zenigata again like you know like the whole thing with jigen kind of distracting him he's like you know wearing a maid's outfit and <laughs> during that time Lupin kind of switching the guy out the owner of the uh statue like that was beautifully done but um in comes mamo kyosuke he's like yeah everything that you will love will disappear so what he says like according to him what he does is like he goes to the past 
skills of the person who made that particular thing and that thing disappears so according to him if he goes to the past and kills rupan's ancestor rupan will also you know like die like the reason why he's doing this according to him is that somewhere in hundred of years in the future the time will come when lupan 13th i think yeah is going to kill his you know like family members or something like that and so he's like ah oh, let's just like you know kill him from the big get go and so that you know like <clears throat> he isn't able to do anything in the future i don't know how much that is true like at that moment i kind of thought that he probably is just speaking i don't know like probably some weird delusions or something he's going through or i don't know and they, they do mention that he is actually someone who went mad or something okay where is that part here it is <coughs> okay um the portion where they're uh <coughs> they're searching the um books okay yeah i'm certain i've also heard of mamu kyosuke as well where is it okay um here we go i found it mamo kyosuke a scientist science fiction author and recipient of the hero award his passion lies in the fourth dimension especially the study of time and space but he went mad in 1966 here we go they do say that he went mad so that's why that's when i kind of said that oh yeah that definitely means he's you know, probably an illusionist and everything that he's saying is just his own delusions or something you know he went mad and stuff i thought it was like that but i'm not sure how much his words are actually true did he really go in the future and see what happened or is he just making it up but the time mission seems kind of legit by the end of it i don't know what was happening but you know what the time mission is destroyed and gone and like if i don't know like if rupan actually stole that and like you know <laughs> stole the time machine and sold it to someone it would have probably if it was the real deal it would have probably went for a lot so it was kind of a shame that he just destroyed like you know if you know like it was like the actual time machine he probably destroyed that one time machine that was actually made <laughs> that's very wild like because time machine is something that no one has still been able to like you know invent so he basically destroyed the first time machine that's what he did <laughs> if it was the real deal i doubt it was the real deal i don't know i'm not sure but anyways uh okay so the, he says that what he does is like he goes back in time just kills the person who made that stuff particular stuff that person dis disappears and that's why you know like whatever like obviously like if that guy dies it will people who are their ancestors they'll also die and uh not ancestors sorry their successors they'll also die <clears throat> and the person that the thing is also disappears because that person doesn't even exist now like i i know like there are like two ways that it, this can be interpreted uh, as far as my knowledge goes you know <clears throat> the thing that he says here that might happen but there's also another thing that actually might happen in, in these type of scenarios that is like if you kill someone if you go in the past and you kill that certain person you know um <clears throat> that person dies so whoever is their like you know successor um obviously like you know people cannot disappear in thin air like you know that will i'm sure that will very much defy the law of conservation of mass you know like uh, like if if you go and kill off someone's grandfather the person who's living in the future he can just automatically disappear like you know that that is a big viol big violation of the law of conservation of mass like law of conservation of mass and energy that is you know whatever mass and like mass and energy is constant it cannot be created nor be destroyed it can however be converted or you know you know from one thing to another that's the law of conservation so that very much defies it as far as my knowledge goes so it's impossible for someone to just disappear in thin air so like as far as i know what actually happens if you go to the past kill you, kill someone's grandfather that person will still exist but what's going to happen here is basically this is going to branch into a parallel world you know <clears throat> it's going to break into two part where in one of the parallel world branches the person will still be alive you know and that you know it will continue but since you went to the past and changed the past and killed that person 
from there onwards it will be a branch in the path and a new parallel world will be created where that person does not exist and if you go to the future now you know you won't find his successors because this world is not a, like you know, the previous world is actually a parallel world in this world since you kill that person his successors doesn't exist so basically what happens is you go to the past you kill that person and you go to the future again but this time you you act, are actually on a different path you are in a different parallel world so even if you go to the future you you see that that person does not exist because this is not the same world in itself the the world that you were from before that's a different branch of the parallel world since you killed that person the grandfather you basically got transported into a different parallel world i don't know that's that's how i know it actually goes but you know like I, I i won't get into more like you know complicated stuff because i myself have kind of rough knowledge about this i'm not sure about anything everything that i have like you know that i kind of know about in, in these type of things you know parallel world and time travel is basically uh, after <laughs> watching steins gate and also like you know me also kind of doing my own research on stuff kind of like, you know checking out articles and stuff uh, it's like some shallow knowledge i have so don't take my word for it i'm not sure at all this is just what how i think it would actually go uh <laughs> so yeah anyways um i i really love these type of things that's what i said you know that's why i said i love these type of time travel like you know parallel world stuff like very interesting uh so this episode was fairly enjoyable not fairly but very much enjoyable for me anyways um that's something different uh okay uh so yeah like he mamo says that and he starts disappearing stuff in front of rupan rupan freaks out and i think this is the first time i actually see him freaking out like this like he's like my god i'm i'm you know i'm, I'm screwed what am i going to do i'm going to disappear and <laughs> he he goes back to his room he sees weird dreams and stuff and i don't know how he was doing that mama was doing that but anyways um Fujiko comes in in hopes of cheering him up but unfortunately, Rupan still is unable to, like, you know, get out of this whole mess. As he goes out, he sees stuff disappearing in front of him. That, uh, like, that horse and the jockey disappears. Then the, the random truck driver, like, you know, like, Mamo disappears there as well. Weird stuff starts happening. Rupan is even more freaked out and he's like, you know what, I'm going to die. So he, he, he confesses to Fujiko and he's like, <laughs> marry me up before I die. Oh my god, that was funny. And Fujiko says that, alright, fine, you know. And, like, this part was kind of surprising for me because it actually was not how I thought it would go. Now, I'm going to talk about it later. What I'm what I'm actually saying, that's the thing that actually surprised me. Uh, anyways, um, after that, you know, uh, Lupin tries to marry Fujiko, but marry, uh, Fujiko disappears as well. And he's like, my god, what am I going to do? You know, I'm, I'm also going to disappear and <laughs> as always Rupan like you know up to his old tricks again he, he hides for a moment to see if Goemon and <laughs> Jigen is actually going to become sad or something and they do become sad you know like obviously they're good friends and Goemon is like I'm going to you know take my revenge Jigen is like like shut up you're an Edo Edo samurai like you know Edo period samurai and that guy is like a time traveling futuristic person like how are you going to do anything to the to him <laughs> and <laughs> my god and rupan comes with an idea <clears throat> he's like uh, he prays to kiyosuke kiyosuke comes and he's like i i i want to wish i want one of my like you know ancestors to die as well and at the same time i want to meet fujiko <laughs> he goes to bring fujiko and here's whatever when he tries to start tricking mamo uh, a setup of like you know an Edo period is made and he he calls himself his ass I don't remember his name um, the name that he said now I do wonder are they are these actual names are, are they uh, Jirokichi yeah here we go is Jirokichi really his ancestor or is it just a random name that he named that he made and then there was another name that was involved in this episode is uh, he says that I'm going to marry a France lady uh her name is Mylene Lupin. Is this also another actual name 
or is this just something random name that he made up let me know if you guys know anything did mylene lupin actually exist you know like i'm talking about the lupin like you know in that lupin stage does this, does this lady actually exist or she made he made a random name or something anyways okay um yeah like he tricks uh mamo <laughs> and obviously goemon is very swift with his sword he just destroys the you know gun and cuts off the time machine <laughs> destroys the time machine and as i said if this actually was the real time machine real deal it like you know it would have been a like i don't know like he so that means he basically destroyed the first time machine in the world like my god that's some thing in the next level but anyways he runs away now here's where the surprise happens you know uh fujiko wakes up fujiko's like oh let's get married and rupan is like no i want to be single for a while and that was just because i thought i was going to die and fujiko actually starts chasing him like this part actually surprised me because i thought it would be the complete opposite i thought rupan would do the thing that fujiko was doing like he would say like oh marry me fujiko and fujiko would be like no since like, you know like this was like you know since the problem is solved i won't I thought it was going to go in that but I was very surprised since the actual reverse happened and you know what I do kind of realize now that it does make sense because I remember in uh, the first thing that I watched I'm not talking about Cagliostro the second one the Mamo movie that I watched Fujiko was kind of like that I do remember that where she was like you know we she did kind of like you know as always she kind of tricks Rupan always kind of betrays or him now and then but at, but at the same time there was this genuine concern and love that she had for Rupan I do remember in that uh, movie so I think like the thing that we saw in this episode where Fujiko was that one actually who got like and was chasing Rupan around um I don't know I feel like that was like a genuine um genuine emotion that she like you know like had like i i don't know like I, I feel like because this is not how i envision fujiko all because the way she acts but here we see it's the actual opposite is happening like rupan is kind of running away from fujiko and fujiko is actually chasing rupan when the actual real deal comes you know like it's very opposite like all the time we see F uh, rupan kind of chasing fujiko but during those time it's basically some very casual stuff you know like for very some very casual stuff rupan kind of goes they cannot chase his Fujiko and Fujiko kind of runs away but when a really serious moment arrives that is this part where they basically say that yeah we're getting married like this is a very serious thing um it kind of reverses completely where Fujiko gets serious and Rupan kind of becomes like no like I, I, I don't want like I was just joking or something like that it kind of reverses and I think that's probably how it is you know like Fujiko's probably very serious with serious stuff uh, which is completely opposite of Rupan, where Rupan kind of becomes more casual as things get more serious, and vice versa. Like Fujiko does not is not so casual, like you know, is not so serious with casual stuff, while she's very serious with serious stuff. Something like that, you know. It it does kind of make sense. Like I do get that feeling from Fujiko and Rupan. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, that was that. That was a fantastic episode. I love this. Oh boy. All right, um, I'll be starting the next one, which is episode number 14. So yeah, let's see what this is about. I'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here. Sync into which is the preference and let's get started. All right, here's the countdown. Three, two, one, go. Whew. <clears throat> okay. Hmm. 
Okay. All right, this is a huge ship. Some party is happening in here or something, some kind of event. Seems like a place where Fujiko would be trying to steal stuff or something. I'm sure she's here somewhere in some disguise. Oh my God, here we go. There she is. Two billion yen, what? That's Fujiko, isn't it? Yeah. That's Fujiko, isn't it? Or am I wrong? Gasari? This is Fujiko. It's not Catherine, who? Obviously, this is Fujiko. I, I recognize that voice. <laughs> no, this is Fujiko. Whoa, they look so similar. Oh my god. Whoa, what? Ah, here he is. But who? Is... <laughs> yeah. Bell. This is Fujiko. Wow, they look so similar. The Emerald Secret. Emerald no Himetsu. Himitsu. Okay, here he is, I think. Ah, there you go. Oh boy. I'm sure Rupan is inside that cake. I, I, can, I can bet that. It's going to give everyone a surprise. When, when, when the girl comes, Catherine comes to cut the cake, he just pop out and grab the, um, the thing. There you go. <laughs> oh my god. Uh. Obviously, Zenigata won't check a cake. I'm sure of it. Okay, don't break that. That's a huge cake. No! Oh my god, he really is going to check. What did you say? Yeah, let me give you my one hour course of how Rupan is doing. Okay. <laughs> God damn. They look the mirror images of each other. Oh my God, is, is she going to replace it with a fake one? There you go. Oh! Oh no. Oh no. Can he not recognize Fujiko? <laughs> well, there goes her chance. 
Oh, she's old. Okay. Did he? Did she see that? Did she see that? I feel like she saw that. Oh my god. Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> Despite his age. <laughs> and he also, she also beat you to the emerald. Oh my god. Okay, here it comes. Okay. Ah! Oh! oh. Okay, yeah, let, let her come close. But it's a fake one, like, what, uh, never. Oh! Mm -hmm. That's a fake one. What happened? Oh, you found that. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yes. Um, yes, I need to tug all of your cheeks for three or four times. Hmm. <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> ah, you don't know him. Raymond's like, wait, why are you asking me? <laughs> ah, yes. Very capable. <laughs> oh my god. Hmm. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> Which goes like, yeah, got the real one here. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> oh. This this cat is very suspicious. Oh! Oh no, that broke! Wait, what? That was also a fake one, I think. Oh my god, the, the girl is playing her! C Catherine! She saw her change. Oh. Um... 
That's why she was so nonchalant of it actually being stolen. And I'm sure she saw Fujiko swapping it. Well, the cat kind of helped them find the... Oh no, is this like... Is this like a robotic cat or something? Like some kind of a... They have some camera installed inside it or something. Trying to keep a track on them. Oh my. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ch change your voice a little bit. <laughs> oh my god, Zeniga just gonna keep an eye on him or something. Uh yeah, you cannot be rude to your great guest, you know. She has no idea who that is, but obviously. I don't think she has the emerald with her. I don't know. Or maybe it is with her. Okay, that's what she's trying to do. Okay. Oh my god. Come on, like, just say some random name or something. Yeah. <laughs> and second one is Raymond. Raymond. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna make him trip or something. Oh my god, she's gonna throw him down the stairs or something. Oh no, never mind. <laughs> That'll be kind of messed up, you know, <laughs> throwing him down the stairs. <laughs> okay, Rupan, you're forgetting your goal. You're forgetting your goal, Rupan. Yeah, definitely. Uh, <laughs> okay, here we go. Everyone, everyone is distracted. <laughs> okay, here we go. Nice. All right, let's go. <laughs> nice. Okay, here we go. Oh boy. <laughs> well. Wow. Whoa. 
Okay. Is it actually with her? Maybe he kept... Oh, okay, maybe it's in inside... Never mind. Oh! Ah! Uh! Yeah. Ah! Uh -huh. Get out quick. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Okay. Oh no, they're trying to find it out. Ah. Uh. Oh my god, he's going to. Yeah. Oh, the eyes! I think it's probably... The, the, the emerald is the eyes of the cat, I think. Oh no. Zeniga, that's... Wait, what's happening? This girl is pretty suspicious. Catherine girl. Why did she help her out? <laughs> I think it's a cat's eyes. Oh, okay, never mind. I thought it was the eyes of the cat or something. <laughs> she knows what's happening. Oh my god. What? <laughs> She's playing them. <laughs> she's able she's she's accomplishing what Zenigath has never been able to do up until now. <laughs> it, it is the cat's eyes. Oh, she hates cat. There you go. It's it's the eye of the okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, she knows. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah, okay, what now? 
Your mustache. <laughs> Look at his face. <laughs> Grab the cat and run. Uh Okay, there you go. <laughs> Took his eyes. I Yeah, that's she's like, oh wait. Oh, don't drop it in the oh my god don't drop it in the ocean is that the end yeah oh wow okay this was another great episode wow i'm loving these episodes now okay oh this is perfect <laughs> wow these two episodes back to back they were so good okay um <laughs> this episode here um we okay uh we are in a boat where there's this one lady called Catherine who obviously in the first like you know at the beginning i i mistook her for fujiko because her voice and her like you know appearance are so similar to fujiko like i thought like i thought it was actually fujiko i was a little bit kind of confused i was like how does she has already has the emerald like you know like usually we are accustomed to seeing fujiko go and steal stuff but if she already has the emerald what is she even doing and then i realized that okay this is not fujiko actually the maid is actually fujiko this is some other random uh girl and i feel like this episode kind of showed us how if like you know if you played your cards right how you can actually trick rupan and which Zenigata, like you know, is usually is unable to do. And <laughs> Kathleen kind of was able to accomplish that in a very, like you know, what you can, what can I say, very witty manner. Now, here another thing kind of came up where she basically kind of used a fake, uh, you know, emerald, wore it in front of everyone because she knew that somehow Rupan was going to get it, and. You know, that's why she took that precaution and the police was also like hiding a not hiding but protecting a fake one and so was like you know Fujiko who got who thought that she got the the original one but it was actually the fake now I've always wondered why don't they do this in other shows where we've seen other shows as well in Detective Conan Kaito Kid as well where they're like you know like there's like a jewel where the thief like you know gives out a call card and says that i will steal this why not actually replace that you know with a fake one from the beginning so that even if the person the thief gets it it will be a fake one i've always wondered like okay like i understand the uh like you know if it's like some diamond or something which is behind high security i can understand it it being the real one but stuff that people actually wear for example jewelry or stuff like just like in this episode you know, I've seen quite a few animes where, like, you know, the thief says that, okay, I'm going to steal that. And the person comes out in front of everyone, you know, in the party, wearing that same jewelry, just flaunting it around. And I've always, like, you know, thought that this was most probably because people are, like, you know, these rich people, these type of rich people who has everything, they are very confident that nothing is going to happen. They underestimate the thief. And obviously they like you know they, they like like to flaunt it around in front of everyone show that look at me like you know even though the thief like you know the phantom thief sent me a letter i'm not afraid of him you know like this type of a prideful thing and they have this type of a weird sense of pride where they don't want to wear a fake one because you know they are so called rich people they want to show the original one in front of uh, their guests and doesn't care and about the thief and very confident that, yeah the thief won't be able to get it like that's basically why people like you know these type of people kind of wear it in front of everyone the real one where but here in this episode catherine did the 
the most sensible thing, the more intelligent thing, where she actually wore a fake one. Uh, you know, because she she didn't care about that, like you know, like you know the the whole process, and she was not prideful. Kind of, she was kind of prideful, I have to say, but not in this particular department. She used her brain. She was like, you know what? Since like somehow, I'm sure Rupan is going to get it. Let me just wear a fake one. And she basically she she was able to know what was actually happening behind the scenes that Margaret was actually Fujiko. Rupan was also the nipple, count of nipple. She knew everything from the beginning. I was just playing them. But, you know, she was a little bit cocky, I have to say, because she basically were just having fun with them, and <laughs> which kind of became uh, the demise in the end. You know, like, that's why she lost the eye of the Nile. And, okay. All right, this episode here. Um, <clears throat> This is uh, another typical, uh, like you know, another uh, you know, normal. Uh, Rupan sends a letter. He's going to steal something. Zenigata is here on on the scene. Uh, Fujiko is here on the scene, and yeah, like Lupan had a nice little plan. He planned to actually be inside the uh, cake, and I thought he was probably going to pop out or something, you know, like say surprise and just grab it and run or something. No, he did. He went through a more you know uh, sophisticated, uh, you know, intelligent method. He used the the thing to grab the um, eye when she like you know kind of went forward to cut the cake while before that uh, fujiko was like ha ah, rupan you you're going you're grabbing the wrong uh, wrong stone i already have the original one and at that moment when she was you know like swapping the uh, gem i did see um catherine kind of you know peeking a little bit and kind of you know like her, her eyes kind of shifted I, I, at that moment, I did not know if that was like an animation thing or she really kind of peaked on, uh, you know, Fujiko. But by the end of it, I realized that she was actually doing that. She knew that Fujiko was, uh, Margaret was actually Fujiko and she was the partner in crime of Lupin. So she knew what was happening from that moment. I'm sure it's probably from uh, even before that moment. She probably knew that. And she knew that and she just like, you know, was tricking them. <laughs> interesting and <clears throat> you know like yeah that was that and <clears throat> then rupan grabs it and i don't know why she fainted suddenly probably she was probably acting or something you know like because she knew that was like a fake one so it doesn't make sense for her to actually faint <laughs> you know and then she kind of like you know comes up and she's like you know what no it's fine and rupan took it i i won't i won't actually like you know bother the party because of one or two you know jewels like that it's fine like that kind of showed like you know everyone how how rich she is like she doesn't even care you know that type of a thing also like at the same time like you know like it the party will go on as it is supposed to be and people always also people will always also say that oh look at her she's such a nice like you know lady such she, like you know such a humble like you know she doesn't care about monetary value she just cares about the moment the occasion the emotions that's what she cares about like for a moment i also kind of thought that at that moment i was like wait a minute this 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 girl she 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 kind of said like the what can i say like the more <coughs> humble type of a thing she did not freak out about the um jewel she was like you know what you know like just just to do a jewel but this moment won't come back ever again so I want to have like you know the maximum enjoyment. I don't want the, a, a mere jewel to destroy this moment. I, at one moment, I actually thought she was saying like you know stuff like that, and then well, then I realized that nah, that was just a fake one. She knew what was happening, obviously. <laughs> but yeah, she 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 like put up put up quite quite a performance there, and like you know like Rupan and Fujiko were just dancing on top of her hand. <laughs> Even Zenigata as well, where all of them were trying to trick each other while, like, you know, Catherine already knew what was happening. I'm, I'm sure, like, when, you know, like, <laughs> when Rupan came in front of her and she's like, uh, you know, Rupan was like, oh, I am Count Nipple from this place. Uh, you know, like, do you recognize me? And at the beginning, she, she, she probably did not realize. She was like, no, who are you? Fujiko comes in and she says that, oh, no, haven't you heard? This is this person and i'm sure catherine realized at that moment that this is rupan like you know fujiko's like an acquaintance and 
she's like oh yeah you're right you know you're, you're that person so yeah definitely i'll have a dance with you and so here at this moment i thought she was actually doing that because she does not want to like you know act you know like she doesn't want to come come out as rude you know like i felt it she was thinking something like that she was probably thinking that oh who is this person i don't recognize him but if i actually say it in front of his face he'll be you know like he'll find find it rude and it'll obviously be rude so just for like you know uh what do you call it? politeness sake I'll say that I remember this guy, but I don't. I thought that's what actually was happening in his in her head. But actually, no, she, that was not happening. She actually realized at that moment that that was Rupan. There was there was no Count Nipul. <laughs> so she here again. She deliberately played them again, and I'm kind of tricked the audience as well. I have to say, because I had, even at that moment I did not realize she knew what was happening. Mm, you know, like. Okay, and then like you know, Fujiko also goes out up like, and they kind of do a little like you know, really good plan where Fujiko starts dancing with Zenigata, and Fujiko says that you know what, you're dancing pretty well now. Just go and ask Catherine, like she might dance with you. Like I was thinking, everything was going on according to plan of Fujiko and Rupan, while it was actually Catherine playing them all along. She knew what was happening. She was deliberately letting it play, and you know, like they they get in, they try to find out the stuff. Zenigata also comes in and I think at that moment I kind of realized now nah, the moment after that you know when Zenigata kind of gets suspicious she's like he's like what are you doing there Count Nipul and Lupin is like oh I'm just you know playing playing some poker I want to play some poker or something <laughs> and that that scene and when after that when uh, Margaret is talking with Catherine and tries to find out uh, where the jewel is no, I think that's when I realized when the jewel actually is because when that's when Catherine calls in uh, Belle, I think that was the name of the cat, and that's when it kind of clicked. I was like, wait a minute, that cat's eye, that's definitely the jewel, and <clears throat> they're giving us hints from the beginning. I did not catch the hint. You know, I, I should have probably got that hint when I saw uh, the cat eating the cake. You know, and seeing his eyes, I should have get, got the hints at that moment, but I wasn't able to catch. You know, catch that, but. You know, at least it, in the end, I kind of realized what was happening. And also, that's when I, I, I again realized that she is tricking everyone, Catherine. She is just playing them. But she was basically kind of looking, like, you know, shifting her eyes back and forth, back and forth. Whenever she was seeing, like, you know, Margaret was talking to her and saying that, where is the, uh, where is the jewel? And she was saying, oh, it's on the top of the ship. Uh, no, it's not in there. It's probably underneath the pool or something like that. Like these type of random things he was, she was just saying just to like, you know, for the fun of it and just to, you know, like kind of play with them. And she was kind of seeing that. And that's when it, I actually realized that she's basically acting. She's just like, you know, messing with them. And by the end of it, when she actually tells to Rupan that, oh, did you actually find it? Like, you know, <laughs> I was just having a fun little fun game with you. You know, like, and she's so cocky, so confident. She's like, ah, Zenigata is coming up, and the party's also over. I had enough fun. Let's just end this. While <laughs> Fujiko does her job, she trips the, you know, um, light. <laughs> Rupan grabs the cat, takes out the eye, and just runs away with the jewel. And that's when she actually realized that, yeah, I probably got a bit too cocky because. <laughs> you know like i got too overconfident and this is what happens i lost my uh, yeah you know i lost my uh, jewel and uh, yeah that was the end i think this is the first time we actually kind of see rupan and um, fujiko working together and getting away with the treasure um yeah i do wonder what fujiko is going to do is she going to try to betray rupan and take the jewel for herself probably will because that's fujiko you know i'm talking about or maybe she'll really just like you know like do 50 50 who knows we'll we want to know but yeah that was it another fantastic episode i love this oh my god like you know like i'm really loving these episodes now and i'm really looking forward to the last few episodes because uh like you know, all of those episodes are directed by um miyazaki and takahita uh takahata sorry takahata and miyazaki so yeah yeah this is fantastic i'm i'm loving this so yeah the, that was it that was my reaction to rupan the third part one episode number 
um, 13 and 14 if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to press the like button subscribe if you're new to this channel or you haven't subscribed and comment down below anything you want to say anything you want to let me know and i'll check them out so yeah that's it thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next week with two more episodes of rupan the third until then goodbye and have a nice day